Welcome back to Jump Scare. I'm Betty. And I'm Shad. And this week we discuss 1983's Mortuary. Yes, you gotta specify, because there's also a 2005 one, which I think I've seen, but I'm not sure. I'll have to look at it again. That one was directed by Toby Hooper. Yeah, Toby Hooper, the later years, so... No good, go. then. Damn. <laughs> Before your funeral and your coffin lid is closed, before you are buried and your flesh turns cold, before you are covered with the last shovel full of dirt, be sure you are really dead. <laughs> Mortuary. Don't come back and haunt me. I'm gonna lay some fucking um, Dr. Pepper and some um, joints by the fucking door to protect me. From the ghost of Toby Hooper? Yes. That is how you repel him. <laughs> he'll just take those and go. <laughs> he'll smoke his weed and drink some Dr. Pepper somewhere. <laughs> What I love about the trailer to this movie is that it has absolutely nothing to do with the goddamn movie. And even has Michael Berryman in the trailer, who does not appear in the movie at any point. And, um, well, does someone come back from the dead? Um, kind of. Yes, in a way. I guess. But, but not, the, not how they put it. Yeah, not how they made it out. See, this is one of those movies that, growing up, I saw in the video store all the time. And I would go there with my friends and I said, ah, we'll get that one next time. Then we never actually did. I think I've seen, had seen clips from it over the years, but, <clears throat> excuse me, I had never actually seen the entire movie until we sat down and watched it the other night. And uh, I gotta say, it was completely different than what I was expecting, because over the years, I've seen the, the famous cover with the hand coming out of the grave, and I just assumed... People were coming back from the dead. It was going to be a zombie, a ghost, a demon, something like that. Nope. No. No, this movie, um, yeah. It's kind of, it's almost like a lifetime horror movie, you know? It's, it's, uh, it's amazingly bad. But <laughs> let's, let's tell you who the fuck is in the movie because we kind of didn't share that. And I feel okay. like that's the most important piece to this movie. <laughs> We're going to we're going to leave the most famous person for last. You have Mary Beth, what is it, McDonald? McDonough. Um as Christy, she's playing the daughter in this film. And then you have Linda Day George who was in Pieces and also Beyond Evil with John Saxton, which is like we were saying it was like not a, a rip off, but very reminiscent to that other movie we did. Uh, we didn't actually cover that one. We just watched it. It looks a little like mausoleum. It looks like mausoleum, but it also looks like, like that Daughters of uh, Satan's Daughters or whatever it was. Yeah. The one we started with Tom Selleck that was we couldn't stay awake for it. Yeah, that one was really bad. But wait a second. I thought we covered mausoleum, but we'll... We did cover mausoleum. Oh, okay. I thought you were talking about the other one, the terrible one with Tom Selleck. Like Satan's Daughters or whatever it was, where they're like whipping the girl at the beginning of it. And we're like, okay, this might be interesting. No. It was not. That was the most interesting part of the movie, actually. That was it. That was the last, only 30 seconds that were interesting. Yeah, that movie was... Okay, we were not going to get into that, but that movie was terrible. Uh, and then you have a young-ass Bill Paxton. <laughs> Looking crazy. Looking... Wait, spoiler alert. We don't... He looks completely gorgeous in the half of the movie. Yeah. He's like... It's the 80s, so it's like early 80s. In the early 80s... For those of you that were not alive or know anything about the early 80s, not that I was alive enough to know what was really going on, but in fashion, um, the 50s were really big. So you can still see elements like they kind of like brought the 50s back, you know, fashion wise. He looks very 50s ish, like his yeah. style of clothes. Uh, he looks gorgeous, very young, insanely young. I was mind blown. We did not do any research before we saw the movie. We just pressed fucking play. And then we were like, holy shit. <laughs> this is that one he was in. 
<laughs> I gotta say too, it looked like the cemetery they were at's the same cemetery from Mausoleum. I, I I feel like there's a mausoleum tie somewhere. We got John Saxton in one of the movies that, you know, it's like a, what is it, the six degrees separation. Yeah. But, yeah, so this, you know, like I said, I was expecting zombies, ghosts, that sort of thing. But, no, this starts off with the guy by the swimming pool just sitting there minding his business. When someone comes up, bashes his brains in with a ball bat and knocks him in the pool. Then I love the scene. A couple of times were like, "Yeah, he just killed himself by jumping in the pool." Wow, were the forensics really that bad in the early '80s that they were like, "Yeah, he must have just hit himself in the head with a bat, three or four good blows, then just chucked the bat where we couldn't find it, jumped in the pool, and drowned." Bullshit. This was an affluent white man. Okay, no one, everyone was going down for the murder. This movie was like um, they would have had the fucking dogs out on the street chasing people. <laughs> They would have had helicopters flying around. You'd have thought he was looking for fucking E.T. There would have been so much <laughs> yeah, to <fucking>. worry out. <laughs> Look, in Polk County, where I used to live, someone stole a kid's bike out of his garage while it was open. So they classed it as a home invasion. It was a 13-year-old kid that stole the bike. They had choppers out with ultra, you know, uh, you know what you call it, infrared and heat signatures scanning the woods. People were they looking for dogs. the fucking predator? Were they looking you would have for... thought so, but no, they were looking for a kid that stole a bike. He also turned out to be like 13. They found him in the woods with the bike, and he was like, oh shit, I'm going to die. They were like, no, but we're going to have to take this bike back from you and maybe charge you a fine. Aren't you glad that your taxpayer dollars paid Supported for that? that? Yeah, it was yeah. great. So, yeah, so convinced that her father's death was an accidental one, which obviously it was not. Um, we have Christy, um, who starts to, like, investigate her dad's murder. But before the investigation <laughs> begins, you have two jackasses walking into this fucking, like, place trying this to... warehouse, and they're like, hey, man, he fired me just because I walked in on a seance he was having with a bunch of hot ladies including your girlfriend's mom so i'm gonna steal these sh tires and maybe some other shit from his creepy warehouse to pay me back it's like oh okay well that's totally legit i see where you're going with that and i love the fact that the warehouse consists of a bunch of coffins and like 1890s looking wheelchair two tires not four just two a machine gun and, uh, oh, yeah, they are having another creepy seance in there. In broad daylight. Yeah, okay, first of all, it's not broad daylight where they're doing it. It just happens to be broad daylight outside. That's they're true, but doing still. that shit in the depths of, like, the underground, like, what, the basement of this fucking random warehouse place. Oh, let's not forget the most important piece of prop material that happens to be at this is the uh, embalming stick rubber yeah, thing. Yeah, like uh, <laughs> tube, you know, the knife and everything they use to embalm. I don't know the exact name of it. Yeah, Somebody out there does. Tell us the name of it. Yeah, so and, tell us the name. And wink, that's, wink. That's just laying around there, too. But, you know, I love how we'll post a video clip of this, but I love when they look down and they see the people doing their, quote, seance. They're doing the craziest dance. It looks like something that... They would have done like on Star Trek in the 60s or Battlestar Galactica where they were like, it's an alien culture and they, this is how they communicate with dance. They were just people like doing kind of the robot meets, I don't know what the hell it was, but they're all doing that around there. And they look like, damn, I had the perfect fucking thing in my head. Yeah, they're doing some crazy fuck it's dance. It's definitely a bunch of white people dancing. It's a Kate Bush video, okay? That should just tell you everything you need to know about what's going on down there. <laughs> <laughs> so that's going on, and they, you know, the one kid's like, oh, I'm going to go look around some more. I'm bored with this shit. While he's gone, that's when the caped crusader, as I call him, just pops out of fucking nowhere with a big, you know, big black cape and a hood. He's got the white face on. It looks kind of like the fucking Pazuzu face from The Exorcist when you see it. And just stabs this guy to death with the mortuary tool. Right after he finds the body of the uh, mortuary owner's wife just chilling in one of the coffins upstairs like nothing's wrong. Yeah, she's just chilling. Her hand's kind of like sticking out. Um... Yeah, it's like the Hamburglar mixed with <laughs> mixed with Bazuzu. It's the Bazuzu, the Hamburglar. That's who's after 
who this person that's going around or entity whatever it is going around um you know murdering these guys one does not make it the other one gets away what is your like we were cracking up so much at like the beginning of the movie that I really can't pinpoint what my favorite part is because I feel like 40 minutes in, we were like, this is our favorite movie of all time. Yeah, um, my thing, my favorite part is where the guy is, you know, the caped crusader is just skulking about in daylight in this fucking cape. <laughs> At one point, he even like is chasing the girl. He's chasing, what's her name, Chris. He's chasing her in the car. He's wearing the fucking outfit in daylight, driving in behind her, like, you know, like coming up real close on her. You can just see him in the rearview mirror and be like, oh, this is not going to be good. I want it so fucking badly for that cape to just wisp out of the fucking window and be flapping in the wind in the daylight. That would have been so amazing. <laughs> or for him to just pass her and they're like playing like some crazy song. He's like playing the Pina Colada song as he drives by. <laughs> he drives by and is just going, do you love Pina Colada? He just looks at her evilly and then just drives on. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Bill Paxton uh, happens to be the son of... The mortuary owner slash seance conductor. Yeah, he's the, he's a seance conductor. And he is an uber nerd. He comes up to Chris, the, the main female character, and is like, Hey, do you want to come back to my place and listen to my new Mozart record? Really? You want to listen to Mozart on an album? That's your opening line for a high school girl? You know what? Mozart is hot. Like, yeah, but In the 80s, if, not, if it was Amad, you know, what was his name? Amadeus doing his Rock Me Amadeus. What was his name? Falco. Falco that did Rock Me Amadeus. You Amadeus, Amadeus. In, you might have had an in, but an actual oh, Mozart oh, record? No, you weren't going to get in on that. You know what? I don't know. Why do you even know <laughs> You don't even like music like that. Why do you even know the name of that fucking guy? <laughs> I'm dead. Because he was everywhere in the 80s for about 10 minutes. And then after that, he couldn't get... The best thing he did besides Rock Me Amadeus was when they parodied his song on The Simpsons and they did Rock Me Dr. Zayas. <laughs> and it was the... That's stop, why you know. That's they, why I know. I knew there was a fucking Simpsons connection. Where they did the Stop the Planet of the Apes, I Want to Get Off. Oh, goodness. So... You have Nerdy McNerderson, who's uh, Paxton there. Paul is his character's name. Paul is uh, trying, you know, to get a date with this chick, and she's not having it because she's having, you know, relations with the guy from the beginning of the movie, one of the guys. The guy who made it. The, yeah, the guy who made it, obviously. <laughs> who, who owned the uh, rockin' 80s van. He literally has the, if this van's a rockin' van, you know, he's got the shaggin' wagon. Yeah, the shaggin' wagon. very, because... When he leaves, that's when uh, the caped crusader in the warehouse steals his van. So not only is this guy like a murderer, he's a car thief. He's and a really bad guy. Where does the car thief take the car? Because I feel like he was like, you know what? I can leave it over here, you know, at the burger joint. I can leave it over here at the gas station. He's like, I'm going to leave it at the fucking roller skating place. Yeah, the roller rink. The roller rink. Because where else were you going to go in the 80s? It was early enough in the 80s that the 70s obsession with roller skating and roller rinks was, was still, still there. So they worked that into the movie. And then I love the guy in like the silver fucking space cowboy suit skating around in the roller rink. And there was literally no reason for them to go there. They just go in and meet some people who are like, hey, yuck, 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 I've got a cheesy joke for you. Oh, okay. And then they leave. Oh, the van's still here. And the introduction of the friends, you think that the friends are going to become part of the movie because they're all stereotypical 80s characters. You have the fat, klutzy, like, you know, the comedian guy, yeah, the, funny guy. the funny guy, he's like overweight or whatever. And he's doing like crazy shit on the skates and whatnot and falling down. Then you have like the nerdy, you know, person. There was a nerdy chick or nerdy guy. You, you had some of the... Those. Yeah, all the stereotypical characters, like the like the blonde girl, like, oh, she's going to be the slutty one. Yeah, I could have sworn there was a skinny black guy in there. <laughs> he was the guy in the space suit, the space cowboy suit, skating around. Yeah, so th then you never see these people ever again. Yeah, they just kind of disappeared. There was no was point. There was, they could have skipped that whole scene. Could they, though? Because I feel like that roller rink scene bought us so much joy. <laughs> it did bring a lot of joy, but there was no point to the movie. 
you know, just like there was no point to the scene where, you know, the guy who owns the van gets called into the sheriff's office and they're like, I swear to God, if you're giving us the the bullshit on this, we're going to lock you up. They just had to have that scene in every 80s movie where the sheriff pulled somebody in and told them he was tired of their shit. I was like, well, he reported a van stolen and said that he saw this guy when it near there when it happened. So what? Yeah, but obviously the, there's already bad blood between the two rowdy McRouderson boys and the fucking sheriff. Like, they're the two guys that are running around. To, they're the guys from Killer Clowns from Outer Space that no one fucking takes them seriously because they're always <laughs> doing stupid ass shit. You know, they're known for doing stupid ass shit. But yeah, so they did for a while, you know, they're just kind of roaming around and then you see... One of my favorite parts of this, too, is the fact that they introduce a whole subplot about the, the character, Chris, that she sleepwalking, sleepwalking and walking around. You she think, knows things. You think that's going to come into play later, but it really doesn't. It doesn't. Yeah. So much doesn't. So right off the bat, we have a trailer that has nothing to do with the movie. And then you have a movie that has no reason on being made because the movie was pointless. Spoiler alert. The movie was fucking pointless. <laughs> Nothing is answered in the movie. You just come out with more answers. More questions. More questions and answers. You're all discombobulated. You don't even know what's going on. You're so fucking discombobulated. Another favorite part is where he just hamburglers up right next to the house and starts <laughs> chasing her. He just pops out of the woods. Ah! He's still got the mortuary tool and he just and pops up. <laughs> And it's a piece of rubber on a fucking wall. <laughs> and it's it's that hard piece of rubber that just wiggles a weird way, and he, it's wiggling everywhere. It's very distracting. I I didn't even know what to make of this. Why there were so many? Why this movie should just be called Why? Yeah, and yeah, they, at one point you have him like he breaks in, he attacks the mom, even though the daughter is right down the hall. The mom is screaming and yelling. He stabs her, the caped crusader. Stabs her about 90 times with this mortuary thing. And we definitely see what his O face looks like. Because the whole time he's stabbing her, he's thrust and he's like, ah, ah, ah. He's very excited. And the daughter does not come in at any point to come save her mom because she can't hear her. But she does come in when it's mad silent and nothing's happening. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, wait, I don't no longer hear my mom's throes of passion. Let me go in. But wait, mom was alone when I left her five minutes ago. So where did this guy come from? Don't it was a hell of a vibrator. That's it must be. She had one of the ones you plug in. Uh, we missed a definite uh, major plot point on why this is all happening to them. But I guess in the end, it doesn't matter because people need to just go see this movie. Yeah, this, this is, is a movie you need to see for yourself because it's just so fucking crazy. I don't even want to tell you who the killer is because I just don't want to spoil that. Because it's... Then... <laughs> Should we spoil it? I don't know. <laughs> but I gotta say, this is another movie that features a very special scene of uh, that was popular in the 80s movies because we saw this in Mausoleum, or not Mausoleum, uh, Madhouse. We saw this in Madhouse where they gather all the corpses together and set them at a table for a party. Yeah, we're gonna have a party, yay! It's a corpse party, yay! You get that scene in there too. I love that. Let's talk about the. Let's. I. I'm worried about what's going on. Uh, I have someone trying to kill me, but I'm also very that. I'm very gets me very horny, and therefore I'm going to just randomly have sex with my boyfriend on the living room floor. My mom can just come in at any given point because she's all out. The, all the curtains are part uh, back on the windows where you can see what's going on through everywhere in the house. This is after like three to four minute like scene in the movie where the light is going on like the electricity is going in and out of the house and they're listening to a record and dancing and it just stops and then turns back on and stops and turns back on so do the lights everything in the house is just going on and off for a while and then after all that it settles and then she's like ah that got me hot stick my panties off and all my clothes and let me just have sex with you and then the obvious body double so the body doubles uh thighs are about twice the size of the girl that is actually in the rest of the movie and then boy she gave the guy the major blue balls because she's like yeah let's strip naked let's make out let's get you on top of me let's get you oh and i'm done i don't want to do this anymore i saw a picture of my dad and i no longer could go forward with this i was no longer horny he took it completely away from me so these are the questions i have okay I have, why is she in a trance sleepwalking all the time? Which we did ask earlier. And they did not explain that. Is she possessed? No. Were, why were they having seances? 
Well, that I can't answer because they were trying to communicate with the mortuary owner had lost his wife and she had lost her husband. So they were trying to communicate with their spouses who had recently died. Okay. Okay, you got that part of the movie. I'm glad somebody fucking got it. turned out to be no real supernatural connection to it. Like, you thought they were going to be doing that, and they were going to be raising him from the dead somehow. Nope, just your typical, let's go down to the seance place and talk to the dead. You know, there's no place to do, a se- like, a better place to do a seance than, like, a warehouse with random bullshit in it, and, like, the basement. That's yeah. the perfect place, I feel. I, apparently they thought so, too. Well, because it's really dark down there, and uh, no one could hear you. So you could play, like, the weird seance music. But then they also, later on, we find them doing it in the mortuary. So I mean, this well... Is like a, this is like a... That's a good place for it, but I'm saying it's like a traveling seance thing. They just go to random places throughout the movie and do the seance. You just go, like, walk in the bathroom, the fucking gas station, like, what the fuck is going on in here? They're just there doing the seance. Like, hey, this is the place. We drew a pentagram over the map of the town. We're doing one in each of the places where the, uh, the fucking uh, points landed. Wow. Wow. That's <laughs> that's exactly what that's that's that exactly makes what happens. Sense anything else in the damn movie? The movie makes no sense. Uh, it is very enjoyable because it is hilarious, and, and there's no spoilers. There's no supernatural events in this. It's all just your typical crazy killer kind of movie. You think keep waiting for there to be something supernatural, anything, some kind of magic, something. No. It's just a regular slasher movie. No one's come back from the dead. No answers to any of the questions that the movie starts, like, literally. (laughs) From the beginning of the movie, it's just, like, question after question. And then they just add up, and it's just, like, the movie ended. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, and we we did miss one of our favorite parts, too, where they're talking in the uh, cemetery to Bill Paxton, and he leaves, and he skips away. He literally (laughs) runs and skips away from them in the cemetery why is he skipping it's i had to rewind it and watch it again because it was a great little run skip just to show you bill paxton was awesome he was awesome and yet maybe he thought there was an ice cream man on the other side because he just like was skipping like like there was like something amazing waiting for him he had a lot of pep in his step that's for sure he sure fucking did well he was listening to mozart that's <laughs> he had to hurry home and listen i guess but yeah there's yeah, this movie was kind of all over the place. There wasn't. It, it's fun to watch, but it, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And this crazy shit happens all the way through it, which is kind of reminds me because when we were looking for trailers for this one, there's a trailer to it tied to another movie called Humongous. I've seen Humongous, but I saw it like I don't know, God, thirty years ago when I rented it, and I don't remember too much about it other than they're creepy on an island. But then I realized, oh, the same guy is in humongous is in this so that must be why the trailers are tied together but yeah so apparently this guy was in a lot of movies that didn't make any sense in the uh, 80s david wallace not the character from the office but that's the actor's name is david wallace his name is david wallace he is from miami florida guys so Uh. he's a floridian and um yeah he's he's been in some he's been in some stuff a lot of these uh actors with the exception obviously of bill paxton did a lot of tv a lot of soap opera stuff yeah and i thought it was interesting that uh the actress who plays the mom linda day george was married to the actor who plays the uh seance holder slash mortuary owner christopher george which was her husband and he passed away shortly after this movie was made uh or released rather so this was his last movie Coincid- that's a terrible last movie to have, I have to say. Yeah. And coincidence that he passed away the same year this movie came out? Yeah, he may have just wanted to get the stink of it off of him. I was going to say they were going to do a seance to get him, but <laughs> I guess that too. <laughs> I just remember he was in uh, a show my dad watched all the time called The Rat Patrol. It's like a uh, World War II show about uh, people fighting in the desert. All I remember about is the opening. The opening every week was the same thing. Like this jeep flies up over a sand dune and it goes, The Rat Patrol. (laughs) That just sounds fantastic. That's it. That's all I remember about it. Which is probably all there is to it. Well, guys, this movie we saw it on Amazon Prime. It's a pretty good copy of it. It's pretty, it's reasonably clear. It's a little better than VHS, but not quite HD, so. Yeah, there was a VHS, like, hiccup in there, the... What was it? You caught it. Not the timing. The um, 
I like jumped or something. Like a little something. tracking thing. It looks yeah. a little like that. It looks like they may have taken like the VHS and just upgraded a little bit. Yeah, but it looks pretty decent. I'm um, considering. Yeah, it's watchable. It's very watchable. It's it's not one of those that we're like, oh, we have to like clean this up and like this is a fucking gem that we need to, for the historical purposes. And it wasn't shit. like when we watched uh, Mausoleum and you could literally hear the film projector running in the background. <laughs> hey, you know what? Because <laughs> I swear to God, they were just recording that like on a video camera on a wall somewhere. You could hear the film projector on that one. It was insane. They did a fucking amazing job. You know, it's so crazy to think like, oh, you go your phone you try to record a movie back then in the day a fucking video like that how big was that like did they have to come in a duffel bag no one thought that was suspicious because the fucking cam uh, camera wasn't going to be small it was going to be huge and like oh it was probably in the studio that they did that it was one of those things where that back in the day they probably that movie was made so cheap that's probably how they transferred it to video you just ruined my whole thing of like two guys going out on the night of the town they're like you know what we're going to go to this movie we're going to record it we're going to sell it underground for like fucking <laughs> two dollars we're gonna become rich and Hell they're no, sitting there the wearing time. like that big ass fuck camcorder like Hell no back at the time the fucking vhs tapes were like forty dollars a piece they were gonna sell that bootleg for like 10 <laughs> oh i mean yes fine <laughs> you you know more about the uh price of things during said time so i'm gonna take your word for it yeah that was back when like got our first vcr and it was like oh we run down to the store and buy this movie. No, you and not. It's $35 for that. You ain't buying shit. We're going to rent that. I can't even imagine a VHS being $35. I've obviously seen the prices of the things, but of the VHSs, you know, but like physically, like going back in time, like hopping in the DeLorean, like, oh, I want to buy this little splash on fucking like, you know, whatever VHS and it's 40 bucks. That's insane. But then again, the player itself, like, that was mad expensive too. Well, like two, three hundred bucks. Yeah, the first one my parents bought was like three hundred and forty nine dollars. Wow. Do you have the receipt for that? No. Uh, and then even when I worked in the video store in the nineties with all the VHS stuff, uh, most of the tapes like to buy were fifty to sixty dollars a piece. That's why they just were strictly for rental because nobody was going to pay that much for them. Except occasionally, some like wild person would come in and be like, "Yes, I'll pay sixty dollars for a copy of Eight Seconds." We sold brand new copies for $60 of 8 seconds and When a Man Loves a Woman. We sold a couple of copies of each of those. Brand new. People were like, I don't give a shit if it's $60. I'll buy it. When a Man Loves a Woman? That's an amazing fucking movie. That movie was fantastic. What? And I never saw 8 seconds either. I don't even know what that is. All I know is the other movie, Andy Garcia. That's all I know. It's a bull riding movie. It's like a fucking, what do you call it, rodeo movie. Wow. Well, I mean, that makes sense. You did live in Joplin, I did live in the sticks. I just remember a friend of mine worked at the movie theater and he invited me up to the projection booth when 8 Seconds was there and he's like, I just want you to look out the booth and tell me what you see. You look out through the window of the booth, all you could see was fucking hats. Fucking cowboy hats everywhere. You couldn't see anybody in the seats. All you could just see was fucking hats. That's an amazing fucking story. I love the story. (laughs) (laughs) It's a sea of hats. That's all. Couldn't see any people. Just a sea of fucking cowboy hats. And then in the corner, fucking Betsy. It was like... Just... Just in the fucking there. corner sitting. Well, I give this film two and a half knives. Yeah, I'll go along with that. It's not great, but it's a lot of fun. It is so much fun. Well, thank you so much, guys, for joining us on another wild evening. And stay tuned for next week, where we're going to have our second serving. Yes, and if you can guess what it is, it won't be all that difficult since it's March. <laughs> thank you so much, and stay tuned to the horror. And now, folks, it's time to say good night. We sincerely appreciate your patronage and hope we've succeeded in bringing you an enjoyable evening of entertainment. Please drive home carefully and come back again soon. Good night.